Hi, gorgeous. A dollar donation supports our safe station. If you're enjoying my work, check a Patreon perk. Uh, um, hey, baby. Mm. Oh. oh, just feels so good to cuddle up next to you. No, I've been on my phone. It's the first thing I do. <laughs> I wake up in the mornings. You'll get used to that, though, I promise. I don't disturb anybody. I just scroll Reddit. Maybe maybe a little TikTok, but not while you're next to me, though. I would never wake you up. Unless you wanted me to wake you up, then I'd find a really funny video to wake you up with. Mm -hmm. You're in very good hands. I've been thinking now that we're getting closer while we were friends we had a lot of conversations about some some pretty brutal betrayals of previous relationships yeah but since we started talking, we really haven't talked about it. A, because we have plenty of time well spent getting to know one another romantically. Well, yeah, baby, everybody, I mean, you know this. Everyone's a little different, and they're different modes, right? So, I've known a lot of people, yeah. It's a common misconception. You date a friend, and you're probably going to do well romantically. I've known a lot of people who dated people who... who were really good friends to them, but then as significant others, they were baloney. <laughs> well, I think it's a combination of things. I think, A, we do switch, you know, it's different. I'm going to behave different, not, you know, obviously not on a core level, but I'm going to behave a little differently when I'm with my mom, for example, or my grandfather than I would with my friends at a bar or a new group of strangers or you and teachers at my job, different environments and different relationship boundaries and expectations will influence the way that someone behaves. And also though, I mean, you can know somebody really, really well as a friend, but you're going to probably know that person even better if you ever dated them. You know, you just have more access to intimacy in, in every way, you know, physical, mental, emotional, what have you. Romance is just a, it, it's, it requires that you connect at a core level that most friendships, not all friendships, but most friendships don't necessarily require in order to be enjoyed. And so I think oftentimes too, you just get to know somebody better. And unfortunately, some people it's not everybody has an ooey gooey chewy center. Some people have a center of crap. <laughs> not you though. No, you're delicious. <laughs> very, very sweet. But anyways, that's besides the point. We actually, we did talk about that a little bit, but no, mostly we've talked about exes who have cheated. Going into this with you, if I'm being perfectly honest, it was a little bit scary at first because I just, because we were so close, we've always been close. The idea of getting to know that about you, you know, and obviously you've given me no reason to believe that you would cheat, but I was, you know, there's a lot of, we don't know about somebody until we learn it. And so I just felt like if you ever cheated on me, I'd be devastated because I just would never have seen it coming, you know. But I figured you probably had similar similar reservations about dating me, too. We've both been through it. So in order to ease those concerns for both of us, so I think you can relate to me on this one. I give you my reasons. Ah, I don't even need notes for this one. I got it covered. <laughs> I 
because it's easy. It's so easy reasons for why I just, it wouldn't behoove me to cheat. I have no interest in cheating because A, as you know, I'm very proud of the fact that I've built a very happy, healthy, single life. When I'm not dating, I don't, I don't have to rely on romance for joy by any means. Now that doesn't mean another common misconception is you're allowed to enjoy being single as well as enjoy a romantic interest. You know, like you're allowed to enjoy and want both, right? You know, like, well, obviously, but anyways, <laughs> it's early, but I'm very, very happy without the, without a romantic interest. And so my only incentive to commit to a romantic interest, in this case being you, is that said romantic interest brings even more joy (laughs) to my life that I'm already very happy with. I would never spend time. I mean, let's not even talk about commitment at this point. You know me. I don't waste my time with people that, that cause me stress or drama And when I do find people that bring me joy, I do commit to that person. I want them in my life because I recognize them as as an asset. And so point being, A, I've chosen to be with you because you are worth my time. You're worth all of my romantic time and investment. So for starters, that wouldn't even leave a lot of room for anybody else, nor would I want to leave room for anybody else because just about everybody else. I mean, I chose you because... I don't want you to get a big head about it. (laughs) Screw it. No, I do want you to get a big ego about it. Nobody else makes me happier than you. Period. I am committed to you because you make me happier than anybody. And therefore, why would I be investing my romantic time? So so life kind of looks like a pie chart, right? We have different, different responsibilities to attend to. You have your work and energy piece of the pie chart. You have your family investment piece of the chart, et cetera, et cetera. We all only, we all have a finite amount of time and energy to be spent within the balance of trying to balance our lives. And so seeing as you make me spending my romantic time with you makes me the happiest. I would have no reason to step out with someone that that I don't enjoy as much as I enjoy you. It just doesn't work. I mean, if I was really unhappy, because I think, I'm trying to figure, you know, what are red flags, right? Now, I think if I were reliant on just anybody's energies to make me happy, I wonder if that's why some people make that choice because they're not happy single. So if you had to go on vacation and I was miserable, you know, it's like, well, uh, like I need... To feel, I would need to feel, I feel like as though I would need to fill that void with romance, with other romantic interests while you were out. However, in my case, I'm very happy and stable and at peace, even when you're not around. So my time then, if you're out, you know, if you're out and about, or you're at work, or you go on vacation, my, my, I'm not stressing over not having that romantic fulfillment. For some time because I'm thinking about all the other pieces of my pie chart that I could be nourishing or I'm thinking it'll be nice to like, you know, watch the shows you don't like <laughs> or play that TikTok full blast in the mornings or, you know, really indulge in things I do on my own time. And then obviously, baby, that doesn't mean that I don't. Again, these are just different. These are just different energy allotments. It, my me time does not compete with our romantic time. However, because I have happy, healthy me time available to me, I've built, I've built a happy, healthy me time environment, me time state of mind. When you were gone, I do not require that romantic void to be filled because I am filling that romantic void with all of the other pieces of that pie chart, or, or I could be, I'm excited to um, nurture some relationships within my family, or I love, my, you know, I love my friends. I'm obsessed with my friends. You know, this is, I see it as an exciting opportunity. Anytime you're not around, it's not that I don't want you around, but I don't stress over, 
I don't stress over it because like I said, A, you make me happier than anyone romantically. So I'm just happy to have you in my life. And B, when you're not around, uh, it's an opportunity therefore to say, okay, well, I've been neglecting (laughs) these other pieces of this pie chart because I enjoy spending time with you so much. You know, I probably overdo it as far as time and energy. I probably have work to catch up on, or I probably have friends I should call or family members I should check in on or me things I haven't checked in on. I should journal, you know, learn, you know, learn the skills I've been trying to learn or the, my solo hobbies that I love do that. Like I just don't see because, and I, and I'm, and I will boast this. I'm very proud that I've, I have proactively built for myself a stable, balanced life that cheating would only, like, I don't even see how I could or would desire to make room for a, that kind of time spent with someone who doesn't make me as happy as you do with that time and energy and B to present potential toxicity into my happy, healthy, stable life you know, to even open the door to potential drama. And then we're not even talking about ethics. We're not even getting into obviously caring about you. I mean, that's a given. But just so you know, there's just, I have no selfish, I have no personal incentive to cheat. It just doesn't feel like it would be a a quality use of my time, you know? So I don't know if that makes you feel any better. And I wonder, you know, there's so many different stupid reasons why people cheat. And it's always stupid. It always, it never helps anyone. It always backfires. Everybody always regrets it and, you know, whatever. Just cycles of addiction almost, just bad cycles of habits that need to be broken and people, you know, whatever. You know, we don't need to get into all that. And I'm so sorry that people have betrayed you and, sorry people have betrayed me it's awful it's awful so you know I've, I've kind of racked my head racked my mind over like why do people do it because I mean I don't know about you but no not they, they still you look into like you run into someone at a party for example like I actually did run into an ex mm-hmm. I ran into an ex well it just wasn't very important because all I really learned was that this person was like still unhappy <laughs> still tanking relationships, still burning bridges, still just recklessly self-sabotaging. So anyhow, I got to wondering, okay, well, when I date again, in order to feel safe, I was, I mean, I feel like this only goes so far because sometimes people are only so honest, but I was trying to figure what are the red flags? How do I identify red flags as to whether or not I can trust somebody with their word. And I wonder if a lot of it has to do with exactly the reasons I just told you. I'm like, okay, well, let me like look inside myself and question, why don't I cheat? Like, why have I never even considered cheating? Why does it not appeal to me? And these are the reasons I came up with as to if you really break it down to the root of it, you know, other than just, I don't want to hurt anyone, but I like, it's never even struck me as an option. It's never even struck me as like a good idea as any sort of temptation when I'm in a relationship and the the reasons I just gave you are the reasons I realized why it's just never served me because, you know, and then we get into our whole pie chart (laughs) analogy, but I don't know if this formula works across the board, but I can tell you for one thing that in my case, now you understand all the reasons as to why it just won't even serve. It doesn't appeal You've got nothing to worry about. And you know me so well. You know exactly what my pie chart looks like for me in my life. Hopefully, this can give you some peace of mind, you know, now that you can understand where you, can, you know me so well that you can validate my honesty on what I've had to say about my life outside of our romance. That hopefully now you can apply that information that you do have about me. And now that you understand the correlation to loyalty, as far as the way I'm wired is concerned, and probably the way a lot of people are wired is concerned. But I'm just hoping maybe this will provide a little bit of comfort. 
because I know this is a huge risk. Dating is very big risk, big reward. You just never really know what you're getting yourself into. But I thought maybe, just maybe, if I break it down, break down reasons as to why loyalty is the only, strikes me as the only positive, enjoyable option within our relationship. And you understood where I was coming from on that, on that point. I don't know, maybe it'd make you feel a little bit better. Maybe. Yeah. (laughs) and also i mean again not helpful to the understanding of to why you should trust me because talk is cheap but the idea of hurting you just wrecks me yeah i'm just expressing myself on that one i know it again talk is super cheap that one you can't trace, that one you can't track to objective observations, but well, actually maybe you can. I hope that I, in actions, in all of my little micro actions and behaviors and words of support, that you can draw that conclusion for yourself. But again, too, I just, I have no personal incentive. Like it wouldn't be fun for me cheat but you know furthermore too god i just can't imagine and then there's your double whammy like not only would that be not be fun for me but it wouldn't be fun for us it wouldn't be fun for you it's not fun for anybody oh it's so stupid (laughs) it's just self-sabotage at its at its greatest maximum potential self-sabotage is cheating do you want to be in a relationship don't (laughs) Why are people committing? Well, they don't want to, and they can't. Well, actually, okay, no. I think a lot of people they want to be the person that that can commit. They find someone that makes them happy, and they want they want to lock them down, and they want to be the person who can be in a relationship. And I think cheating is like a surefire sign of failing in all of those regards. Failing to be the person they aspire to be. Failing to be a strong happy, healthy person, failing to be, failing to, anyways, I think it's just a massive sign of failure and self-sabotage and blah. And as you know, I am very much a go-getter. I do not fail at things. (laughs) And dating you is so easy. It just feels so right to be with you. I'm not worried about it. (laughs) I can speak for myself. No, I'm a little, obviously it crosses my mind. I'm a little nervous about you, but I also know we're on the same page. We've both been through the same stuff. It helps that we've both talked about it a lot previously in our philosophies on cheating. And so, and that's been consistent. That's been a constant, the way in which you've felt about the stuff we've gone through and but, you know, obviously it's easy for me to trust. Obviously it's the easiest thing in the world for me to trust that I won't cheat because I'm in my own brain and body. I get it a hundred percent. Like I know exactly where I'm ever being deceptive or not. And in this case, you know, the, um, but I understand that you're not a you know, mind reader. And if you, my point is, if you ever do get a little nervous, even, even after this conversation, if you ever just get a little nervous, you can talk to me, baby. I get it. I do. If you need a little extra attention here or there, I got you. Okay. I can use a little extra attention here or there. <laughs> Please. Okay. Thank you. Okay, baby. Mm, you want to cuddle up five more minutes? Just five more minutes. That was a good talk. Thank you. Yeah, see, it feels good to talk about stuff. (laughs) You just might get good news out of it. Yeah. You're cute. Just call me. No, I'm going to put the phone away for you, boo.
but only for you. Don't tell anybody I do that for you because then everyone will expect me to put the phone away and I don't want to ever unless I'm with you. <laughs> Did that happen? I know nobody's perfect. I'll work on it. I'll work on it. I'll work on it. <laughs>